going to be talking about the Mediterranean diet and its path to lifelong health and longevity. So first, I'm going to go over the key takeaways for this presentation and what we hope that you take away from it. So after this presentation, we hope that you will be able to understand the heart healthy aspects of the Mediterranean diet, be able to list key reasons why consuming an adequate amount of fruits and vegetables is beneficial for your health, identify sources of healthy fats and understand their importance. We want you to be able to list which food groups you might consider consuming less often, understand why the Mediterranean diet emphasizes a well-rounded lifestyle full of activity and community, and build a balanced plate following the Mediterranean diet recommendations. So let's get started. So what is the Mediterranean diet? Well, it's a diet based on the eating habits and the traditional foods in the Mediterranean section of the world. So these are going to be countries like Greece, the south of Italy, Spain, etc. And to get more detailed, so why is this diet so revered? Well, Greece is a country that adheres very closely to this diet, and Greece is a blue zone. And I'm not sure if anybody else on here has watched the Netflix documentary about blue zones or have heard this word circulating recently, but a blue zone is a region in the world where individuals reach the age of 100 at greater rates than the rest of the world, and people just live longer in general. And the rate of people reaching age 100 in blue zones is actually 10 times greater than that of the United States. And individuals in blue zones not only live up to age 100 more commonly, but they live to age 100 without health complications. Um, and they're not on excessive medications and they're able to really like ambulate and do daily living activities without needing much help. And also this lifestyle is rich in social connection, which leads to a much more fulfilling life. So why is the U.S. so behind these other countries? Well, in the U.S., we tend to follow the standard American diet, which is called the SAD diet um, for the acronym. And if you can see on this picture on the right, this is a comparison of the Mediterranean diet with the Western diet. So in this presentation, we'll be looking at the Mediterranean diet pyramid. And the pyramid shows at the bottom foods that are consumed most regularly, like multiple times a day, up to the top of the pyramid, which are things that are consumed very infrequently, maybe twice a month. And if you look at this Mediterranean diet image compared to the Western diet, the Western diet is eating most of the things that the Mediterranean diet does not. So in the Western diet, it's an abundance of meats and sweets and a very, very small amount of fruits and vegetables. And in America, our large portions and high intakes of saturated fats, refined grains, and excess sugars leads to rates of high obesity, diabetes, and comorbidities such as heart disease, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. And to give you some statistics to really show you this um, in numbers, the recommended daily fruit and vegetable intake in the United States is one and a half to two cups of fruit and about two to three cups of vegetables. And in the Mediterranean diet, these are recommendations are met really easily um, because it will have two to three servings of fruit a day and four or more servings of vegetables, which is over the recommendations. But in the American diet, um, only 12.3% Americans actually eat daily fruit recommendations, and it's even lower for vegetables with only 10% of the population meeting those recommendations of two to three cups of vegetables per day. So why does it matter that the U.S. is so behind um, and so different than the diet close to the Mediterranean diet? Well, diet-related disease is on the rise in America. As of 2021, 2,500 Americans died each day from cardiovascular disease, and this is about one person every 34 seconds to give you an idea. And as of 2023, 40% of Americans were obese. And in 2021, 38.4 million Americans had type 2 diabetes. And overall, the Mediterranean diet is linked to lower rates of these diseases. And so it may really help us to bring these numbers down in America. So this is a picture of the Mediterranean diet pyramid and what we're going to be focusing on for the rest of this PowerPoint. So as you can see, it starts from the lowest of things that are to do every single day to the highest of things to really limit. So first, we're going to be talking about the base, which is physical activity. 
So physical activity is really important. And in the Mediterranean diet, functional movement is really a key component. And this really means like doing little activities throughout the day, such as choosing to walk up the stairs, maybe doing some gardening, stretching, and walking. And this is all on top of the daily recommendations, which are to do 150 minutes of moderate exercise weekly or 75 minutes of vigorous ex activity weekly and vigorous activity activity is going to be more um, harsh or like um, you're going to be working a lot harder than that moderate exercise, which is why it's less minutes. And ex exercises that are examples of this aerobic exercise are going to be like running, biking or swimming. And this is also in conjunction with doing um, high to moderate intensity muscle strengthening at least two times per week. And so physical activity is really important because it improves your brain and your gut health, it improves your weight management, it improves your mobility, and can lower your risk of getting chronic diseases. And daily movement really just improves your overall life quality. And having good eating patterns like we're going to talk about today can improve your activity and promote high energy for your daily movement, allowing you to increase your physical fitness. So now that we've covered the base of the pyramid and this activity, now we're going to move up to talk about foods to eat daily and multiple times a day at that. So starting off in this category, we have plant-based foods or plants. So this diet really rests, as you can see in this pyramid, on plants. And this is going to be just fruits and vegetables. So focusing first on produce that is primarily eaten in the Mediterranean region is going to be artichokes, figs, citrus fruits, peppers, tomatoes, pomegranates, grapes, olives, and apples. And though these are the vegetables and fruits that are primarily eaten and grown in the Mediterranean region, and why um, the Mediterranean diet has been led to such a healthful life, um, all fruits and vegetables can give you these same um, benefits and effects. These are just specific to the Mediterranean region because that's what's grown there. So talking about the benefits of consuming all fruits and vegetables, um, first of all, they are very high in nutrients like vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants, which we'll talk about in detail on the next slide. And many fruits and vegetables are also high in fiber, which can keep you fuller for longer. And examples of these specific foods are going to be like pears, green peas, raspberries, broccoli, potatoes with skin, and apples with skin. And that skin is really the important part that's giving you the fiber. So next time you're thinking about cooking with potatoes, consider not peeling the skin off. Or when you're packing apples for your um, child to go to school with, consider not peeling that skin off beforehand. And eating a diet high in fruits and vegetables can aid in lowering blood pressure, reducing the risk of chronic diseases. It can aid in digestive issues and have a positive effect on your blood sugar. So as promised, here we're going to talk about antioxidants. So this is a big word and we're going to talk about what they are. So antioxidants are natural compounds in plants that prevent something called oxidation in your body. So basically in your body, you have these free radicals, which are harmful particles and antioxidants can neutralize the harmful particles that can cause oxidative stress. And essentially that just means antioxidants are a really, really positive compound um, that can decrease the damage of cells in your body um, which can lead to chronic diseases. So an increase in antioxidants can dis decrease your risk for getting chronic diseases. And plant-based foods have a much higher level of antioxidants than meat or any other category of food. And then to go deeper into the benefits, antioxidants can help prevent age-related macular degeneration, which is a leading cause of vision loss in adults over 50 years old. It can also protect your skin from UV damage when used with sunscreen. It can lower your LDL cholesterol and saturated fat, which we're going to talk about in detail in a moment, which can reduce heart disease risk. And it's high in fiber and full of vitamins and minerals because of the foods that it's eaten with. So if you eat fruits and vegetables, not only will they have these antioxidants, but you will also get the benefits of their fiber and their vitamins and minerals. So now that was a lot of information. How do you apply this to what you eat and how you shop at the grocery store? Well, this is a really great chart. And if you look up antioxidants and colors, you can really find this anywhere. Um, so antioxidants and phytonutrients are um, kind of words for each other. 
And these are pictures and kind of a synopsis of different colors of fruits and vegetables that you can eat to get different benefits. So starting from the top at white and beige, consuming foods like garlic, mushrooms, and different types of artichokes can give you um, a certain type of antioxidant called anthoxanthin. And the potential benefits of this are that it can protect against cell damage, it can prevent inflammation, and it may protect against heart disease. Now going on to red, if you love tomatoes or watermelon or grapefruit, you're gonna be getting a lot of lycopene in your diet. And this will protect against cell damage, it can prevent certain cancers, and may prevent against heart disease. And then to our orange and yellow fruits, we have good old carotenoids. So bell peppers, sweet potatoes, and most types of squash are gonna be examples of some orange and yellow fruits that can provide this. And they promote hormone production, they promote eye health, and they might help prevent against heart attacks. And then moving on to green. So any green vegetables or fruits that you eat, like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, spinach, is gonna have chlorophyll in it. And chlorophyll can help you prevent colon cancer, it can help your wounds heal, and it can help increase your energy levels. And then finally, on to blue and purple. So any foods that are blue or purple, like blueberries, beets, eggplants, are of anthocyanins, and this can help you prevent things like breast cancer, inflammation, and improve your cholesterol levels. And then finally, um, one that we wanted to add is the color brown. So Anything like coffee, wine, and dark chocolate is going to have phenols, resveratrol, and flavanols, um, which really benefit you because they can lower your risk of heart disease, diabetes, and inflammation. So really the sum of the slide is that eating the rainbow and really getting a diverse group of colors of different foods can be really beneficial to you and getting those antioxidant properties. So now that we've talked about fruits and vegetables, whole grains are another group of food that are on this level to eat multiple times a day, every day. So what is a whole grain specifically? Well, if you look at the picture at the bottom of this slide, a whole grain retains all three natural parts of the grain, the bran, the endosperm, and the germ. And so because it has all three parts, it takes longer to digest, which keeps you fuller for longer. And whole grains are high in fiber, which is important for gut movement and the microbiome. And if you look in the picture in the top right, this is a little sign that you're going to see on any whole grain products in the grocery store. And so you can see on here that it says eating 48 grams or more of whole grains daily is really important. And you can look for this when you're looking for foods in the grocery store. And to give you a little statistic, on average, the grains that Americans consume are only 15% of them are whole grain, when the recommendation should be at least 50% of the grains you eat should be whole grain. So you may be wondering, what are the other grains? These are called refined grains. These don't have all of the parts of the grain, and they are not as beneficial to you. This is going to be like white rice would be a refined grain versus brown rice, which would be a whole grain. And so now let's get on to some examples. Let's say you're going through the grocery store. What are you looking for for whole grains? How do you fit this into your diet? Well, starting off good with quick one minute oats, you can get rolled oats, but these I think are really beneficial because they're really quick to cook. It's a great replacement for like another sugary type of oatmeal. Also just getting whole wheat bread to have on your sandwiches is really good. You can get whole grain pasta and see how your family likes that. Um, also, um, going right next to that, the 90 second quinoa and brown rice. So quinoa, I feel like can be kind of daunting to try. So having something like this, which is like a 90 second microwavable bag mixed with brown rice, it's a great base for a bowl, or it can just be um, a side to a dish. Also below that, um, another microwavable option is Bird's Eye. This is a brand that does easy microwavable meals. And this whole grain rice even has some vegetables in it. And one of those vegetables is corn, which as you can see in the can next to it, corn is a whole grain. So getting a can of corn can help to fit those in. And then brown rice. So I love boiling a brag rice. I think that it is really quick. It's really easy. You just put it in a pot of boiling water. You take it out. You cut the bag open and you put it in whatever meal you're eating. And some people may ask, you know, is regular cooked rice um, more healthy than boil in a bag? Actually, no. They're going to be just as healthy for each other. And um, even going a little further, 
when because this rice is pre-cooked when you cool down the starch which is in grains and you heat it back up it actually builds resistant starch which is a really good fiber so it can be more beneficial now on the same um level so our base we're building up we've got fruits vegetables whole grains and now we've got legumes what is a legume? Well, to put it simply, it's something more commonly known as a bean, and it's basically edible seeds found in a pod of a plant. And so examples to put in your brain are, it's any type of bean, peanuts, chickpeas, peas, and tofu, which is made from soybeans. So why should we eat legumes? Well, it's a great source of plant-based protein that is not gonna have the amount of saturated fat, which again, we'll talk about in a moment, as um, some animal-based proteins. It's also high in fiber, which like we said, is gonna keep you full for long. It has healthy fats in it, and eating these daily can lower your risk of developing obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, heart disease, and strokes. So again, legumes is a big word. How do we look for this in the grocery store? Well, they're not really that expensive and you can find them pretty much anywhere. If you look in the canned aisle, you can easily find some lentil soup that's already pre-cooked. You can also find a microwavable bag of lentils. This one that we found was at Target, but I believe that you can also find these at Aldi. And they're very easy. You put them in the microwave for 90 seconds and you have some lentils. And then things that are under a dollar, we have different canned items. So black beans under a dollar, chickpeas. You can also get a bag of sweet peas from the freezer section. And then the last thing we wanted to talk about was tofu, um, which this has quite a few servings in it um, for just $2 at Walmart. And so you might be thinking, okay, fruits, vegetables, grains, legumes, how do I put this all together? Well, one of my favorite dishes to make every week um, is something that I call Texas caviar, or some people might call it cowboy caviar. But a recipe like this, where you literally just chop a bunch of vegetables and fruits and things up, and then you put them in a bowl, can be a great snack, or it can be a great meal for lunches to pack. Um, it's got beans in it. It's got um, corn, which is your whole grain. It's got bell pepper, red onion, um, tomatoes, and you can just squeeze some lime juice on top. It's very simple and very easy. And then now let's talk about those healthy fats that I mentioned earlier. So what are healthy fats? Well, they include monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats, mainly from plants. Their properties health help reduce cholesterol and inflammation, reducing the risk of heart disease, unlike saturated fats. And the fats that are found in the Mediterranean diet are these healthy fats, such as nuts, fish, and olive oil. And I'm looking below to compare the unsaturated and the saturated. If you think about it, an unsaturated fat is going to be liquid at room temperature, and a solid fat is going to be solid, or a saturated fat is going to be solid. So you can think about if you leave your butter out on the counter and not in the refrigerator, it will still be a solid block. It's very saturated. It's very packed together. Whereas if you look in your cupboard, maybe your olive oil or different types of oil are going to be still liquid at room temperature, and those will be your good unsaturated fats. Also, unsaturated fats contain good omega-3s and omega-6s, which we'll also talk about in a moment. And unsaturated fats increase your HDL or high-density lipoproteins, which we'll go into detail about. And like I said, they're found in nuts, fatty fish, like salmon and olive oil. Saturated fats basically do all of the opposites. They increase your bad cholesterol or your LDL, and they're found in things like butter, margarine, lard, and red meats, which are all things that we really want to stay away from um, to avoid these really unhealthy fats. So let's talk about these high-density lipoproteins and low-density lipoproteins. Well, as you can see our little angel at the top, the HDL is going to be good cholesterol. Both are types of cholesterol, but one is good and one is bad. So our good cholesterol actually collects excess bad cholesterol in the bloodstream, 
And so it can move it through and prevent artery plaque from building up. And so as you can see our little devil over here, low density lipoprotein, this is bad cholesterol that will stick to your arteries and build up, which causes your blood vessels to become narrow or clogged and can lead to an increased risk of heart attack and stroke. So if you look at our pictures here on the right side of the screen, in the top one, you can see the little blue dots are the HDL and the little orange dots are the LDL. So so the orange dots on the right side are really clogging up and causing the artery to have a much smaller space for the blood to get through. And if this becomes clogged all the way, that can obviously cause a heart attack or stroke. Whereas in the HDL picture, if you're consuming enough of those good fats, if you're consuming enough olive oil and nuts and fish, it can help remove the bad fats that you're consuming and really help to open up that artery. And another picture is the one below it. So you can kind of see, imagine the good fat as like a scoop and it's just able to perfectly cup up that bad fat and just move it through your arteries really efficiently and really effectively. And now let's look at cooking oils. So I want to emphasize that a lot of people talk about olive oil. Olive oil is very healthy. It's the one that we recommend the most. And the reason that olive oil is frequently used in the Mediterranean diet is just because olives are grown in this region. And though olive oil contains great benefits, there are similar products that also do that we can obtain. So examples of these are like avocado oil, sunflower oil, sunbean oil, safflower oil and canola oil and um, you actually want to try to limit coconut and palm oil because those actually have high saturated fat content so let's look at these so as we said olive oil is going to be our number one but if we're looking at what let's say you're going through the grocery store and you're looking at this aisle of all these different oils what do you choose well we put these in order of what we think is best based on their saturated fat um, and unsaturated fat content, and we also listed their prices. So while avocado oil would be our next best bet, probably canola oil would be the best bang for your buck because it costs so much less, but it's still got the great benefits. And um, next we have sunflower oil, safflower oil, and then soybean oil, which is going to be the least expensive. But again, um, we would recommend canola oil more, which has a similar price point. And now let's look at the nutrition facts labels. So on the left side of the screen, we have a brand of olive oil. And as you can see, the saturated fat or our bad fat has only two grams, while the unsaturated fat has a total of about 11 and a half grams. So that's a lot of great unsaturated fats or good fats. On the right side, we have coconut oil, which is solid. And the saturated fat content is 13 and a half grams, while the total unsaturated fat content is only 0.5 grams. So you can see that the olive oil is a much better choice than the coconut oil, and you can see why. So now we're going to be moving up. So we've talked about the base of our pyramid, physical activity. We've talked about the fruits and vegetables, whole grains and legumes, and how you should have those multiple times a day. Now we're going to talk about foods that you're going to want to eat daily to weekly. So starting off strong with fish and other seafood. So this is to consume at least twice a week, probably um, more often if you're able to. We know that it's expensive, but we do have some cost effective options. Um, seafood supplies other healthy fats such as omega-3 fatty acids and polyunsaturated fats to the diet. And so we mentioned these omega-3 fatty acids. So omega-3s are anti-inflammatory and they can help to balance that good and bad cholesterol in your body. And fish and seafood might be expensive, as I said, but there are more cost-effective products like frozen and canned fish. And the benefits of consuming seafood regularly are that it can reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease, it can improve your cholesterol levels, lower your blood pressure, and it's a great source of protein, um, again, without as much of that saturated fat, and it's a great source of vitamins and minerals. So let's look at some cost-effective options of getting fish. So personally growing up, these two um, Publix bags on the left and right of your screen are what I grew up with. My mom would always go and get a bag of tilapia or salmon or shrimp in the freezer section, and it's really low cost for how many servings it allows you to have. 
But if you do want a fresher option for salmon, Aldi, can, you can actually buy two fresh fillets for a total of $8, which is a really great deal for fresh salmon. And then you can see at Walmart, you can get um, scallops in a bag. You can get four whole servings for only about $6. And then tuna. So you can get canned tuna, which is a great source of a lot of protein um, for very cheap. And you do want to get the kind that is packaged in water instead of the one that is packaged in oil, though. And so now still on this level, um, or a little bit up, we have dairy. So dairy is something to consume about once a day to a few times a week. And it just so happens that in the Mediterranean region, the kinds of dairy that they consume are the more flavorful varieties of cheese. So this would be like Parmesan or feta. And by choosing these, it's naturally favoring those less processed cheeses. And these preferences lead to a higher intake of healthier fats and a lower intake of the saturated fats found in other dairy products. And the dairy products consumed are usually fermented, such as yogurt and cheese. Um, however, milk is actually not typically consumed by the Mediterranean diet. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean that it's unhealthy. It's just uncommon. More common now would be more plant milks like almond soy or oat milk. And so talking about dairy and the benefits in a balanced diet, so even though dairy products have the downside of containing unhealthy fats, they still have plenty of benefits to have a place in a balanced diet, especially if you choose low fat options. And this really applies to milk. So getting a lower fat milk um, can really fit into your diet easily and be a great way um, to get things like vitamin D and calcium, which can help you maintain strong bones. Also, milk proteins, whey, and casein can help you build and maintain muscle mass and strength. And so now also on the same level as dairy to eat maybe once a day to a few times a week, um, we have poultry and eggs. So poultry is going to be like birds, like chicken and turkey. And eggs also are all popular foods in the United States, but they're actually not that commonly consumed in the Mediterranean region. And this does not necessarily mean that these foods are bad or unhealthy, but we can note here that they are moderately consumed only about a few times a week in this population. So now that we've covered the base of our pyramid, our plant-based foods, our grains, our legumes, we've talked about fitting fish in at least two times a week and saving poultry, eggs, and cheese for about once a day or a few times a week, we're going to talk about the smallest portion of this pyramid that is really to be consumed the least amount, and that's going to eat be meats and sweets to eat monthly. So red meats are foods to limit to only a few times a month, like maybe twice a month. And this is going to be beef, pork, and lamb, um, which are only typically eaten in the Mediterranean diet about twice a month. Um, and originally, this came about in this diet because meats are very expensive, but they noticed over time scientifically that because the Mediterranean region was consuming so little of these and so like not often, then that is part of the thing that contributed to their high health because these types of meats have high saturated fat content and this relates it to um, cardiovascular disease and cancer. And the Mediterranean lifestyle really emphasizes protein sources from plant-based or seafood options instead as a substitute to red meat. And now sweets. So sweets are also something to limit to only a few times a month. And these are things such as cakes, cookies, pastries, candy, et cetera. And these are also um, eaten so little because of their excess fat and sugar content. So the excess sugar in your body can lead to weight gain and excess fat can lead to plaque buildup in the blood vessels like we should before. And this can potentially cause heart attacks or stroke. And now listen, I have a sweet tooth. I know most of you probably do. And so we're going to talk about how to curb that sweet tooth if we're trying to limit it to just a few times a month. So fruit is a great source of natural sugars. And we fruit is one of the things that you want to eat every single day, multiple times a day on this diet. So fruit is a great option. And kind of judging it up with some honey, which is a natural sweetener of the Mediterranean diet full of antioxidant, antibacterial, and anti-inflammatory properties. 
also dark chocolate. Um, and that's going to be something with at least 75% of cacao content. And this is low in sugars, more low than like milk chocolate, but it can still give you that chocolate fix. And so let's give you some really realistic options um, of ways that you can curb your sweet tooth. So first we have an all fruit sorbet, which is, you know, maybe similar to ice cream or another sorbet, but just without the excess added sugar. Next, we have a baked pear topped with honey and granola, and this can be easy to just slice in half, stick it in the oven for a while, and then you have a delicious warm dessert, especially in the winter time coming up. Um, another great option is just taking like a dark chocolate bar or some dark chocolate chips, putting them in the microwave to melt them, and then using either nuts or strawberries to dip inside, which is so delicious. And then frozen grapes with lime juice. So this has been a trend that's been around for a while that you can make um, green grapes taste like Sour Patch Kids almost just by um, sprinkling them with lime juice and putting them in the freezer for a few hours. So um, if you really have a sweet tooth, then I would recommend trying that. So now we're going to move on to drinks. So, of course, um, the Mediterranean diet promotes drinking water every single day. And to tell you about how much water you should be drinking, it's about one half of your body weight in ounces. And so to do a little example, let's say a 180 pound man, um, if he if you cut that number in half, so 180 divided by two, that's going to be 90. You put the ounce sign behind it. That's 90 ounces of water a day. Easy peasy. And then another thing is wine, red wine specifically, so and especially in moderation. So the Mediterranean diet does normally have a glass of wine maybe for dinner, one glass of wine a day for men and two glasses a day, one glass a day for women and two glasses a day for men, excuse me. Um, but we do want to emphasize not to start drinking if you don't already drink. Um, we're really just saying that red wine is a better option than a white wine or some other alcohols. And to go into why that is, so when consumed in moderate amounts, I really want to push that, um, red wine does contain some antioxidants. Um, there is a polyphenol called resveratrol, which can help protect the lining of your blood vessels in the heart and make it potentially heart healthy, again, in moderate amounts. Um, and other perks of resveratrol are that it may pr help prevent damage to blood vessels. It may help lower your... Um, LDL cholesterol, which is the bad one, and prevent blood clots. And to talk about where resveratrol comes from specifically, resveratrol in wine comes from the skin of the red grapes that are used to make it. And this means that eating just regular red grapes or drinking grape juice could give you the same health effects without the consumption of alcohol. So really consider that if you're looking for this benefit. And drinking red and purple juices can have the same heart healthy effect. So now the point of this is that I just want to say grapes and grape juice would be a much healthier option to red wine. But if you're choosing to partake in drinking alcohol, then going for a red wine can be much more beneficial than a white, a white wine or another sugary option of drink. So going from talking about moderation with wine, let's talk about, about moderation and portions. The entire Mediterranean diet is about portions. And this is a little trick that I like that you have your hand, right? You can take it anywhere to meals, look at it. So we want to think about that at meals, a fourth of your plate, you want to be grain. So that would be like a closed hand. This is the size of your palm. And then protein is also going to be a fourth, but that's going to look like an open palm. So that's going to be bigger. And then fruits and vegetables is going to be like an entire fist because you want that to be half of your plate. And then oil is just going to be like the tip of your little finger. And so again, just to put that in a perspective, looking at this plate, so fruits and vegetables, we want to make up a total of half of your plate, and then a fourth of it should be grains, and a fourth of it should be protein, with sprinkling those healthy fats on top um, with things like olive oil, nuts and seeds, or adding slices of avocado. And of course, with this plate, thinking about adding your favorite treats in moderation with friends. And something we wanted to say was that if you're thinking about snacks, um, a snack formula of adding a fiber source with either healthy fats or protein can really help you stay fuller for longer um, and aid in that. So what does a simple day in the Mediterranean diet look like? Well, we made one for you here. So 
starting out the day with like oatmeal. So we've got some rolled oats. That's going to be your whole grains with soy milk, frozen berries, which are a really healthy and cost efficient option to get fruit, um, sliced almonds, cinnamon and honey. And then for lunch, we might have a salad with leafy greens, carrots, cucumber and onion, edamame, which is a really high protein plant option. Um, avocado, which is that healthy fat with sesame ginger dressing and whole wheat pita for your whole grains. And then for dinner, maybe you would have a three bean chili. Again, beans are those good legumes, really good for you with some diced tomatoes, vegetable broth, peppers and onions, low sodium chili seasoning, and some cheese if you wanted to add it. And now snacks. So some snack options to put together with that fiber with a healthy fat or protein. Carrots and hummus are a good option. An apple with peanut butter, a handful of nuts, whole grain crackers and mashed avocado, or air pop popcorn with trail mix. So we started this whole presentation talking about physical activity, and we went over what is in the actual Mediterranean diet, and I want to end out the actual diet part by talking about lifestyle. So the Mediterranean lifestyle is really important and really adds to why this diet is so healthful and people in the Mediterranean region are very social and so participating in social activities such as festivals, family or friend gatherings, and dancing can be really beneficial to your health and well-being. Also like we talked about earlier, daily exercise and movements, doing self-care and meditation, yoga, journaling, and an annual health care physical. Also, Practicing mindful eating by enjoying food flavors, chewing your food to completion, and paying attention to how food makes you feel can really help you to get the best benefit out of these healthy foods that you're eating. And to expand on that mindful eating portion, um, some really good things to do when you're eating this good food is think about eliminating distractions while eating. Maybe that means putting your phone in a different room or turning off your TV. Also noticing the flavors, textures, and aromas while you're eating a meal. Staying present in the moment, especially when you're eating with the people around you. Also just chewing your food thoroughly and setting your fork down between bites could be an interesting way um, to test yourself and see if you're eating mindfully. And benefits to this are that it can increase your meal satisfaction, it can improve your digestion, it can reduce overeating, and it can reduce stress. And like we said, a really good way to really do some self-care is regular health checkups. And luckily for you, if you work at the University of Alabama, you get free employee health screenings with Wellbama. So you can register at wellness.ua.edu. And there are three left in the end of this year. And it's going to be next week on the 30th, Tuesday, November 12th, and Wednesday, the 20th. So think about going to those um, if you haven't already. So now that we've talked about this diet, let's talk about the health benefits and how it can help you. So the benefits of the Mediterranean diet are that it's associated with a lower risk of heart disease, obesity, and type 2 diabetes, each of these three topics which we are about to talk about in detail. It supports healthy digestion and cholesterol levels, it lowers your blood pressure, and it's endorsed by the American Heart Association. So why does it have these benefits? Well, it's because this diet is low in those bad saturated and trans fats. It's high in those anti-inflammatory omega-3 fats. It's high in fiber, high in antioxidants, and high in whole grains. So first of our three is heart disease. Heart disease is really helped by consuming the Mediterranean diet because this diet is high in fiber. So it's because it has so many whole grains, fruits, and vegetables, this can help to lower your blood cholesterol. Also, the Mediterranean diet is high in antioxidants, which can reduce the buildup of artery plaque. This is the same for omega-3 fats, which can increase your HDL and lower your LDL and lower your total cholesterol altogether. And this diet is low in saturated fat, which is the fat that leads to plaque buildup. And here's a little statistic. Those who followed the Mediterranean diet have a 50 to 70% lower risk of recurrent heart disease compared to the sad standard American diet. Next is obesity. So because this diet is really high volume, meaning full of fruits and vegetables, which are 
really high volume and full of fiber. So they take up a lot of room in your stomach, but they're low calorie. So they're going to keep you feeling fuller for longer and you're not going to be able to eat as much. And also this diet has an emphasis on healthy fats and healthy fats are satiating, which allow you to feel fuller for longer as well. Also, this diet is less restrictive than traditional diets, and it really allows it for it to become a well-rounded, healthy lifestyle where you can still enjoy treats in moderation. And in a study published in 2023, participants on the Mediterranean diet lost an average of 8.7 of their body weight in one year, which is a healthy weight um, in a whole year and really just sets the way um, for maintaining that weight loss and maintaining a healthy weight in the future. And now third of all is diabetes. So as we just talked about, this diet can aid in weight loss. And because of that weight loss, that can improve insulin sensitivity and reduce your risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Also, this diet can help with blood sugar management because fiber and fat both help slow down digestion and it slows the release of glucose into your bloodstream, which can help manage that. Also, this diet is low in refined carbohydrates and sugars, which are associated with high blood sugar, and this diet is really just a low glycemic diet overall. And another statistic, the Mediterranean diet is actually associated with a 19 to 23 percent reduction in risk of developing type 2 diabetes. So final thoughts to pull this whole presentation together. So a diet emphasizing plant-based foods and unsaturated fats such as legumes, vegetables, and olive oil can be really beneficial for you. This diet limits red meat and sweets, which are harmful to your body. And this is just a lifestyle of joyful movement, sharing meals with friends, enjoying wine in moderation, and having self-care. And it lowers the risk of chronic health conditions overall. So that's the end of this PowerPoint. I appreciate all of you for coming and I would love to answer any questions that anybody has.